Tales of the Black Dog, Part 1. A glint of armour flashed in the undergrowth. The figure of a soldier lay writhing as the blood left the trail, <clears throat> leading from the track. A centurion, no doubt, still half conscious and waiting for assistance, still one hand on his sword's hilt. He struggled to skew his head to one side, looking for a higher vantage point. He seemed hopeless. The quietness, though, was suddenly broken by a scuffle in the scrub oak. The soldier quickly turned his head in the same direction. He clawed himself up, trying to find a strength to meet his quandary, his breath stilled in the silence. A black head peered through the shrubs, sniffing nonchalantly, occasionally peering up at the now propped body of the soldier who had settled down to relax his pose. The dog, on finding the leather pouch about 20 feet from the injured man, picked it up with his mouth, the soldier realising it was his own. It duly delivered it back to its owner, who perplexed, acknowledged a grateful nod. The soldier drank whilst the dog stretched out in front and met his eyes. After a few minutes, it decided to pick itself up and continue onto the nearest mound. But of a sudden, the air was rattled by the sound of hooves. The black dog perched his head up and suddenly howled, stopping the horses in their tracks. The sound of conversation followed. The murmurs increased and the screech of blades were heard drawn from their sheaths. The injured man took out his own, tapped a rhythm on the nearest rock, which was subsequently replied by a counter rhythm. Tensions eased and two more Romans entered the clearing. The three soldiers quickly conversed, the two new entrants peering up at the direction of the mound. But the black dog was gone. The copse of pine beckoned instead. Rain clouds loomed and a distant rumble set the scene as a few drops gave provision to what was about to follow. Suddenly the wind mimicked the black dog's previous howl and the tips of the trees started swaying wildly. The dog was caught in an attentive moment, its nose and ears navigating the surrounding rocks with a renewed vigour. A baby's cry suddenly took it by surprise, and the dog doubled its efforts in its search. The rain poured harder now, and out of disappointment it barked at the violent air. The sound of the baby's cry got louder. If it was mistaken in its intentions before, there was no doubt in them now. A woven cradle could be seen lodged in one of the trees at about head height. Draped over the sides was a woolen blanket. The dog struggled to quench its curiosity. It tried various angles to get a look in. Eventually, it scampered up one side of the tree as if its canine legs were invented for it. Crooning its neck, it managed to glance in. And there, with ruddy red cheeks, was a gurgling baby suddenly quieting from the visitor's entrance. It smiled and laughed a moment. It could not have been older than a day, still wet in the bonds. But the sound of clanking armour pursued them in the same direction. Three soldiers glinted in the sun's rays that had momentarily escaped from the clouds. In fact, they seemed to strike a path towards the mound also. They too were drawn to the baby's cries. The dog took a few stops aside and watched on as the soldiers loomed over the cradle. Grasping at various directions, the baby's tiny hand first met the blade of a dagger prodding at its garment. The soldier in question was quickly reprimanded by his colleague when they both suddenly noticed two penetrating eyes peering from the undergrowth. Whether it was a rumble from the sky or a growl from the earth was hard to tell as, as a continuum seemed to exist everywhere. The air was thick with an unknown substance. The clouds began to darken even more. A lightning bolt tore at the sky. The agitated soldiers began arguing profusely. The Reggie Indian man and gave a second glance to the baby and started pulling at the branches. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning ripped at the tree in question. The rain pelting down now. It turned to ice. The other two soldiers raised their shields into the air. But the injured soldier had been thrown to one side from the shock whilst the baby and cradle miraculously tossed from side to side as the tree continued to sway. It stood firm though. 
A great confusion entered the group as the injured soldier lay unconscious. Suddenly, one of the horsemen lurched into a gallop. The other kneeled at his compatriot's side. The dog was fixed in his stare. Merlin stopped crying. His mouth opened and rain entered it. The trunk of the tree suddenly gave a massive crack. It splintered and then began its slow descent. A look of horror seized the conscious horseman. The horse is whinnying and flitting from side to side. He grabbed at his colleague's armpits and dragged them to avoid the falling tree. Its slow collapse, almost surreal in the wild elements. It buckled unexpectedly in a different direction. Baby and cradle all came tumbling down. The soldier let out a shriek as he slipped in the mud, the tree crushing the unconscious man. The baby rolled out and sprawled over the bleeding corpse, instinctively grasping at its armour. Latching onto its breastplate, a sudden paleness came over the motionless body. The black dog leapt into the air, the horses bolted. Everywhere was thick with pine needles. Men could be heard in the distance, the bewildered life soldier could do nothing more. The death of one was leading to the birth of another. The black dog advanced upon its object. Their eyes met and it licked at the baby's face. The dead centurion's body, half crushed under the mass of branches, gave one last twitch. Its remaining heat cradled the baby's own body now. Within a moment, the area was engulfed by foot soldiers, heaving at the splintered tree. Shouts of exultation raged between them. And before the bodies could be located, the dog had already slipped away into the undergrowth. Yet another day in its life.